All right. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. On behalf of Sunbelt Rentals Flooring Solutions, we would like to thank the ISSA for the opportunity to bring to its members a roadmap to grow your business. Say more yes to surface preparation success. My name is Alec Germond, National Account Manager for Flooring Solutions, and I get the distinct honor to introduce our presenter today, Ron Bridges. Ron is the manager for our Concrete Specialist Program and brings more than 35 years of experience working with concrete surface preparation, polishing, repair, and maintenance. Ron has been all over North America teaching the art and science of concrete prep and polishing and is well known throughout the industry. After today's call, now you can say that you know him as well. As you will soon hear and see, Ron is an expert in this area of floor care and, prof and a professional speaker on this subject. Additionally, Ron is a current and longstanding member of the American Society of Concrete Contractors, the International Concrete Repair Institute, Certified Flooring Installers, the Flooring Contractors Association, and the ISSA. He will be available for further consultation after this webinar, along with our entire team here at Flooring Solutions with over 70 locations nationwide. We are available 24 seven, 365 days a year to support you in this area of work. For some additional fun on today's call, we will be giving away four Sunbelt Rentals customized Bluetooth speakers. You can win one of these by simply being one of the first four questions in the chat box. Where we, where we will be monitoring this and answer and address these at the end of today's presentation. So any questions that you have throughout today's presentation, please go to your on-screen Q&A box and type them in. Before I hand it over to Ron, I do wanna share this quote uh, in which Ron says, it's almost unlimited as to what you can do with a concrete floor. It can be challenging, but the job itself is just a process. If you can mow the grass, I can teach you to polish concrete. So Ron, please teach us the roadmap to grow your business and allow us all to say more yes to surface preparation success. Thank you, Alex. And I wanna welcome all of you to this presentation. Today, I will be discussing concrete preparation, polishing concrete, and the maintenance of polished concrete. My goal is to try and get you out of your comfort zone. I want you to consider the possibilities of adding new services and offerings to your business. We want to help you say more yes to your customers. Let's start with a safety message. The safety and well being of our customers and teammates is of the utmost importance. Some of you may not be familiar with the equipment I will be discussing or may have used different brands of the equipment. Please always start by reviewing the operator's manual. In there, you will find the protective equipment that you need to wear, um, any additional safety precautions that need to be taken. Some of our equipment is propane powered. Make sure you know the dangers of carbon monoxide and only use this equipment in well-ventilated areas. Ensure your operators are trained. Sunbelt team members will go over the safe operation of the machine when you pick it up or on the job site if it's delivered. We also provide additional training classes <clears throat> that they can attend. One last must if working with concrete is to understand OSHA silica laws. These can be found on their website and directly affect concrete grinding. Sunbelt has the equipment to help you be in compliance, but it is up to you to be compliant. Sunbelt Rentals is one of the largest rental companies in North America. Most people know us from the construction sites, but what makes us different is Sunbelt Rentals is designed to offer solutions. We have the broadest fleet in the industry through our different specialty groups designed to serve distinct customer segments. Each of these specialties has trained experts for the best in-class customer service, support, and equipment. As a Sunbelt customer, you have access to all these specialties. Not having equipment should never be a reason for not bidding a job. We can help you say yes. The equipment we will be discussing today resides in the Flooring Solutions Division. Sunbelt Rentals has over 900 locations. We are in 46 states in Canada. 
In the Flooring Solutions Division, we have 75 locations, four of which are in Canada. We offer the single largest indoor-outdoor surface maintenance fleet in the industry. With our wide range of equipment, we can offer great solutions for a growing business without the financial worries of ownership. So would you say yes to a job like this? This is a large facility that they're needing ground. Maybe they're going to polish it or put down a coating. Or possibly would you say yes to a job like this, a large banquet hall that needs the carpet replaced? Would you say yes to a job like this, a large facility that needs their uh, polished floors maintained? Or to a job like this, getting up high on a ceiling and uh, doing a little touch up paint. Sunbelt Rentals helps you expand your scope of work. Rental can help you expand your scope of work without large capital expenditures. We also provide training and safety certification courses on the equipment. You can choose a rental option to help you say yes. Why rent? Immediate availability. The equipment we carry was not easily rented a few years back. If you want it in the concrete business, it required a large capital investment. Now you have the ability to quote tag work with zero capital investment. We offer re reliability. We provide white glove service and top quality equipment. No maintenance worries or lengthy downtime. Do any of you own your own equipment? <clears throat> has it ever broken down on a job site? Sometimes it can take days or weeks to get the equipment fixed. That is not an issue when you rent from Sunbelt Rentals. Time is money and we can fix or replace the same day. You are covered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we offer ease of obtaining top quality equipment. We strive to be seamless to our customers. Order equipment in person, online, or by phone. We will help you say yes to your clients 24-7, 365 days a year. So how will you grow your business? Acquisition is one method. Um, this usually requires a, a good bit of capital, uh, experience, and there's a good bit of risk. While acquiring... New customers is another option. It, uh, of course, acquiring new customers is always a good idea, but in today's markets, this can be challenging. Another option would just be to expand services to your existing clients. These skill sets are acquirable, and you have immediate access to equipment and training with lower risk. Sunbelt helps you increase your capacity and efficiency, allows you to do more with less risk. Polished concrete is one of the most popular flooring today. 15 to 20% of all flooring installed is polished concrete. Polished concrete accounted for 54% of the U.S. market in terms of revenue versus coatings. Sunbelt Rentals is a member of many associations that can also help. American Society of Concrete Contractor, and specifically the Concrete Polishing Council. These are the ones who actually write the standards for polished concrete. Then we partner with equipment companies and distributors like Niagara Machine, Bartel Global, and Tenet. I know I've been doing this uh, for quite some time, but sometimes even I get stumped. But with this large network, I always find someone that can help me. When you do these product projects, you'll have the same support. So how will you grow your business? Here are three revenue streams. Prepping concrete for a coating or topping, polishing concrete, and the maintenance of polished concrete. These skill sets are very acquirable, 
adaptable, and the processes are well-defined. It's possible that some of your customers are asking you about this now. So the benefits, the reasons that a lot of people are going to polished concrete. One is superior durability. Properly maintained, polished concrete can last as long as the concrete. This makes it a very cost-effective option. It is a lower maintenance. It's not a no maintenance, but it is a lower maintenance floor, usually just dust mop and a wet mop. A lot of architects are now designing this into buildings because of improved reflectivity. Uh, with the uh, polished concrete, they can reduce the number of light fixtures that they're putting in the building and make it a little less energy uh, reliant. Elimination of dusting. This is a, uh, dusting is a natural process of concrete as it starts to break down. And during the polishing process, you will be densifying which works with the floor to reharden that surface and seal it off to prevent it from dusting. Reduce tire wear just because it's a smoother surface. Uh, no production or plant shutdown. So you can go into a uh, plant, do maybe a thousand square feet a night, take everything out of that area, polish it up, put everything back. Next night, come in, do the next section. You don't have to completely shut the business down. And then for all these reasons, it is ideal for areas of heavy foot traffic. So the polishing process, the first thing is to remove whatever is on the concrete. And in doing this, you want to use the least aggressive method for removal. Then you'll start with grinding. This will be your metal bond diamonds, your 30 grits, your 70 grits. Honing would be your hybrids, your 50 hybrids, your 100 hybrids, and your 200 resins. And then polishing starts out at a 400 grit. 400 grit gives you sort of a dull luster. 800 grit is the first step where you start to see reflectivity in the concrete. And then with each additional step, you won't visually notice a lot more shine, but what you'll notice is more clarity. So if you're looking at a light reflecting in the 800, then you were to look at a light reflecting in the 1600, it would be like focusing a camera lens. The image will be just a little better defined. And then there is the continued maintenance of the um, polished concrete, the refresh, the revive, and the restore. So what is polished concrete? By definition, polished concrete is a concrete floor that has been mechanically ground, honed, densified, and polished using a series of finer grit industrial diamonds until you've reached the maximum level of shine the floor is capable of or your desired level or budget. So we can take new concrete. Now, ideally, as a general rule, you want it to set up about 28 days or we can take existing concrete and turn them into really nice serviceable floors. Do any of these uh, look familiar to you? Are they areas that you are currently doing work in? If yes, we can help you expand your services. If no, we can help you say yes to get into these type of facilities. So these are the type of facilities that are doing the concrete polishing, your industrial maintenance plant, your warehouse facilities, shopping centers, dealerships, aircraft hangars, um, schools, restaurants, office buildings. And now it's become a, a big thing for residential. In order for Google Maps, to give you directions, it needs two things. It needs to know where you're at and where you're going. 
trying to determine what, con what equipment to use on the concrete is the same thing. The first thing we need to know is what is the current conditions? And then what is the final desired results? Getting the wrong equipment at the beginning could negate the ability to give the customer the floor that they wanted. This example here on the right, this was a brand new building. The owner of the building was going to use it as a shop to work on um, construction equipment and didn't want the oils and fluids from the machines to soak into the concrete. The contractor came in there and used a shop blaster. Shop blasters can leave what's called cornrows. Those are all those stripes that you see going down through there. The, then he proceeded to put a clear coat over top of that. Of course, the clear coat didn't hide any of that. So the contractor had to come back and grind all that coating off. And they ended up putting a solid two-part gray epoxy on the floor was not the floor that the owner of the building had originally wanted, but at this point in time, it was the only floor he could have. So where are you starting from? What are the current conditions? There are several things that can be on the floor, but they usually break down into three groups. You're gonna have things like your soft goods, which will be your carpets, your vinyls, your VCTs. You're gonna have hard goods, which would be your woods, your ceramic tiles, stone tiles. And then of course you have coatings and coatings can be either a thick or a thin. Then the next most important question is what is the desired final finish? If they're going to be coming back with another thick coating or they're going to put down a carpet or tile, you don't have to worry as much as if they're gonna polish the concrete. When you're polishing, you need to remember that that concrete is your canvas. And if you do too much damage to it at the beginning, removing products off of it, you may not be able to obtain a good result at the end. Then additional things that you wanna consider is how old is the concrete? Again, old concrete really doesn't matter, but concrete less than 28 days unless there's special consideration, you don't wanna be on it grinding. And then how many square feet and what are the time constraints? These two work together. Using a propane grinder 30 inch to go from a 30 grit metal up to an 800 grit resin, it takes you about eight hours per 1000 square feet. So if you've got 2000 square feet that you need to get done in eight hours, you're gonna need two machines. There's no way to rush the process. And then can you use propane? Are you working in an area that has uh, proper ventilation where it's safe to do so? If not, what electric power is available and how far is it from where you're working? And last, how do you access the job site? Some of these grinders, uh, can weigh close to 700, 800 pounds. Getting them down the stairs might be doable, but it is going to be a bear trying to get them back up the stairs. Floor scrapers are usually going to be your first line of attack for removal of floor coatings. They can increase production by getting jobs done faster with less labor but scrapers do not leave a clean surface. There will be some glue remaining, some residue. A grinder is almost always needed to follow one of these to finish the cleanup. This is our lineup at Flooring Solutions. On the left, you have two battery operated machines. The top left is a BRB 1500. Blast Pro's model numbers are the actual weight of the machine. So that is a 1500 pound machine. Underneath that is the BRB 3100, battery operated 3100 pound machine. In the middle, you have a national. This is a little 110 electric machine, and it's very good for getting into small tight areas where you may not be able to get a rider. 
And then on the right, you have the propane units. You have the uh, BRB 2800 propane, and under that's the BRB 4500. And with the scrapers, there's an array of tooling depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you're removing VCT, linoleum, you're scraping up glue, you're going to use a flat blade. If you're removing a rubber coating or you're trying to remove carpet, you're going to want to use a self-scoring blade. These have the little wings on the uh, sides that will cut it into strips. Here in a minute, you'll get a, a good view of that. And then shank blades. Shank blades are what you're going to use to remove your hard goods, your ceramic tiles, your woods, uh, sometimes a thick epoxy. And then this is just an example of all the different uh, uses for a uh, right on scraper. One item that's a lot of times overlooked is this one in the lower left hand corner build up. Your industrial facilities a lot of times will have processes, uh, maybe a paint booth or a conveyor line that has drippings that build up over time on the floor. Scrapers are usually very effective at going and taking that buildup back down to concrete. So here we have the National 110 unit taking up some ceramic tile, some VCT tile. And here in a second, you'll get a good view of that carpet blade. There are the wings cutting it as it slices through it. We'll watch one more carpet cut there. How it takes it and just kind of cuts it in a strip, making it easier to roll away. This is the BRB 3100. This is a battery operated unit. And one of the advantages to um, battery operated unit is there's, there's no combustion engine, there's no fumes. So if you're in a small confined space, it's a lot safer to use than a propane unit. This is the uh, BRB 4500, a propane unit. Now, one of the advantages to propane units is once that uh, tank on top is empty, all you have to do is change out the tank, start the machine back up, and you're back in business. You could virtually run this machine 24 hours a day. Whereas with a battery operated unit, once the charge is down, you have to stop and wait for it to recharge before you can uh, start scraping again. Shot blasters. Shot blasters are primarily used for prepping a surface for a thick mill coating, but they can be used to remove some products. They will not work on anything that will absorb the impact of the shot. So if you're trying to use it on a thick glue or a rubber surface, a shot blaster will be ineffective. Here's our lineup at Flooring Solutions. Um, across the top, you have the BP9 uh, shot blaster. This is a little 110 volt unit, very light duty can get up to maybe 200 square feet on plain concrete. Next to that is the BP9SP. This unit is a 230 single phase unit, and it'll get up to about 450 square feet on plain concrete. And then on the bottom, you have the BP10 Super. This unit will run on 240 or 480 three phase and can do up to 1,500 square feet. So this would be good for your medium to large jobs. Now, all three of these do require a dust collector to uh, go with them that's not pictured. And then on the right, you have the uh, BP1027. This is an all self-contained unit. It has the dust collector built into it. And this unit will also get about 1,500 square feet an hour. So it's also good for your medium to large jobs. Here's the uh, nine inch self-propelled unit in uh, operation. This floor here had a VCT tile on it. They scraped it up and then there's just a thin shadow of the glue remaining. 
So there you have a concrete surface profile, probably uh, somewhere around three or four. So you could uh, vacuum that up, put your coating down. Here's the 10 inch ride on, self-contained. One of the advantages to shot blasters, how you see these grooves, you see the breakouts in the concrete, a shot blaster will get down in all of that and clean them out. You can see all the cracks. And then when you see that uh, little membrane in between the joints, it just bounces off, does nothing to it. Scarfires. These units will remove concrete faster and more aggressively than shot blasters or grinders. This drum over here on the right has loosely fitted uh, cutting teeth. The drum spins at a high rate of speed, causing them to spin. And as the drum comes around, they're hitting the surface of the concrete, breaking off whatever's on the surface. These units are good for uh, leveling surfaces, texturing, and grooving. Now, it is an impact tool. So depending on what you're putting back down, you may need to do another process afterwards. These units can create what's called microfractures. And what that is is where the concrete starts uh, getting loose from around the aggregate. And if you were to put a coating over top of that and the aggregate were to pop out, the coating is going to go with it. Shaver. The shaver is similar to the uh, planer in that it's very quick at removing concrete. The difference is this is a more surgical approach. Instead of using impact to remove the surface, you're using a drum with stacked diamond blades, and you'll actually be cutting the surface away. This unit can take up to a quarter of an inch off per pass. And there's many different drum setups for this uh, unit. In this picture here, lower left-hand side, you can see they set the drum up to cut decorative uh, blocks in the concrete. On the right uh, at the top there with that long arm out in the front, they're using it to flatten the concrete. It'll go through and cut the high spots down to the lower spots. And then below that, you have an example of safety grooving. Uh, this is used in areas like barns or other areas where there's lots of water to help prevent slipping. And here you have the uh, unit in operation. Normally, you would not leave that big gap between your cuts. This was just uh, demoing the machine but you will see that it leaves a light corduroy finish that you can go back with a grinder and very easily knock that off. There is a dust collector there uh, at the back cleaning up after the cut. Then there's another hose there that leads to the front of the drum that is vacuuming as it cuts. Grinders. Grinders can remove coatings, prep for coatings, smooth concrete, and polished concrete. These can be used on natural stone floors, terrazzo, and overlays. We have them in both electric and propane. Across the top is our electric units. You have a 13.5-inch uh, edger. That unit runs on 208 single phase. Next to that is a little 110 unit. Um, again, very light duty since it runs on 110. Then next to that is the 25 electric. That unit can run on anything from 200 to 240, single or three phase. And then across the bottom, you have our uh, 20 inch propane. And even though it's about the same size as the 110, it has about three times the production rate of the 110. And then next to that, you have the um, 30 propane. And then uh, we also have a new ride-on grinder. Um, this unit can get you up to about 6,000 square feet an hour.
And with the grinders, there's an array of tooling, depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish. You have your metal bond tooling there on the left. Those are your workhorses. Those are the ones that will uh, grind the floor, prep for coatings, remove coatings. Then in, uh, next to those, you have your hybrids and your resins. Those are just finer grit toolings. Um, they really will not remove much from the floor, primarily just the scratches from the previous step. And then you have specialty tooling. You have your PCDs. Um, these units are for breaking down thick coatings on concrete, um, ideally stopping right before you get to the concrete, switching to diamonds, and then grinding the rest off. You have your scraper blocks, which are, as it suggests, they're for scraping coatings off the concrete, maybe a thick glue or carpet glue, something like that. And below that, you have a bush hammer. Uh, bush hammers are for giving you an effect very similar to a shop blaster. You can get a concrete surface profile of about five to six with them. And here you have an example of the propane unit in operation. This unit on the right is a staple for every rental company. It's been in the market since the 60s. Here, the unit on the left, it's already clean behind that machine. So you can vacuum that up and it's ready to put a coating or you can continue through the steps and actually polish it. What makes this machine more effective is it's a planetary machine. So underneath it, you have three heads that spin that are mounted to a larger plate that counter spins. So you've got a lot more motion going on underneath that machine. This machine here just has two heads that slowly spin. So it just sits there in the uh, material to be removed, gumming the diamonds up and stops cutting. Negative air machines. These are good units to have in just about anything that creates dust. Um, what it does is it takes the air, brings it through a preliminary filter, then it takes it through a HEPA filter and blows out 99.9% .9 clean air. It has two uses. You can use it as an air scrubber where you just set it in the room with you, suck in all the dirty air and blow it right back into the room with you. Or if you're in an envir environment where you cannot have any of the dust or germs outside where you're working, you'll tent the area off, set this machine inside, duct the clean air outside. What this does is creates a negative pressure. In order for the fan to make up air, it's going to be drawing in around any loose seams around that tent. And with the inrush of air, any of your dust or germs or whatever you're trying to contain cannot swim upstream, so to speak, to get out of the containment area. Now this next section is on the maintenance of polished concrete. Now, the first most important thing is to determine the type of floor and make sure if it is mechanically polished or just a sealed floor. Um, this, these processes are for a mechanically polished floor and could possibly scratch the finish if it's just a sealed floor. And Sunbelt, of course, is here to help you make that determination if you need it. So your first part of maintaining co polished concrete is just a normal daily maintenance. So you're going to dust mop it. You're going to um, every so often, depending on traffic, do a uh, auto scrubber with a diamond impregnated, impregnated buff pad and a concrete specific cleaner. Then you can. Uh, one to three times a week, uh, burnish it. Refresh is the same process, but instead of using a uh, diamond impregnated buff pad, you'll drop down to an 800, 1800 
secret diamond impregnated pad and go over it four passes to bring that shine back up. Then you'll turn around and burnish it with the 1800 grit diamond impregnated pad. If uh, these methods have not been done or they're not working, you have what's called revive. Revive, again, is a repeat of the previous steps. You're just going to drop down another grip. So you'll go over the floor with an 800 grit diamond impregnated pad. Then you'll go over it with the 1800. Then uh, you'll dust, I'm sorry, then you'll uh, apply any protective equipment or treatments and do a high speed burnish on it. And then light restoration. Light restoration, again, very similar to the previous steps, but once again, you're gonna do any repairs that might need to be done. And you're gonna start out with a 400 and then work your way back up to the 800, 1800, put down any of your uh, protective equipment or uh, coatings and then uh, do a high speed burnish. And last, if you have a polished floor that really has not been maintained at all and has started to really lose its shine, has more of a dull luster, you usually do not have to start over going through the entire process. What you can do is what's called a heavy restoration. In this one, you're gonna go through again, repair any uh, pop outs or problems with the floor. Uh, you'll grind the concrete with a grinder with a 50 hybrid, a 100 hybrid, a 200 grit resin, and a 400 grit resin. Apply your densifier. Then you will go dry with a 400, 800, and 1800 grit pad. Then you can use a uh, your auto scrubber with the uh, a proper, proper cleaners, densifiers apply any protective treatment, then do a, another high-speed burnish, and this floor should be back to its original shine. Resources. So every Tuesday, we do a Concrete 101. This is a very basic intro to um, the concrete equipment to uh, concrete diamonds and just basic concrete 101 knowledge. Then on every Thursday, we do a grow your business, which is uh, the basis of this presentation here. And we also offer live training. Um, this is our schedule through February of 2023. And at, what we do here is at uh, our locations across the country, we offer an eight hour hands-on polishing seminar. In it, you will learn how to evaluate the floor, what equipment to use. You will learn how to repair the floors, how to grind the floors, how to do joint filling, how to do staining, and how to polish the concrete. So with that, we can open it up to any questions. All right. Well, Ron, fantastic job. And uh, yes, we will be giving away the Bluetooth speakers that we talked about at the beginning of the call, uh, but we're also gonna be giving an additional two speakers with some fun upcoming questions. But again, terrific job, Ron. I've seen this several times and it just keeps on getting better and better. So hopefully everyone agrees with that. Before we dive into some questions, we did have a number of requests for this presentation and some videos that were in there. And the answer is yes. Uh, these will be provided after the webinar through the ISSA resource library. And there's also several ways um, that you can contact us to get this presentation as well. Ron, if you wanna hit the next slide. 
Uh, so you can reach out to us uh, at flooring.info at sunbuttrentals.com, or you can reach out in the 844 number as well. You also have Ron's contact information there at the bottom. Uh, so it's ronald.bridges at sunbuttrentals.com. Uh, and with that, again, we'll be glad to get you this presentation along with our service prep guide, our free training webinar that Ron just talked about on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then also our live training workshop as well. The good thing about that live training workshop is that we also provide you lunch, so we'll feed you, but it's also a great networking opportunity as well. So, Ron, we do have lots of questions, so we'll dive into the first one here. Let me pull it up. All right, Ron, our first question here's from Barbara. And her question is, with training on the use of equipment, would Sunbelt come to our facilities or would our team need to go out to a Sunbelt location? Also, can you go more in depth on what you mean by the project analysis perk to using Sunbelt? Great question, Barbara. Yeah. Very good question. The answer to that, I, I guess, simply is yes. Um, we can do training at our facilities, so you can come to us. Um, we will do training at your facilities. Um, so it, whatever whatever would work on that for you. Um, now, with the polishing process, um, that usually requires a little more um, help than just dropping the equipment. So we have concrete specialists all across the country. We have 12 now and are going to be putting in more. So we have people that can come out to your job and you know, work with you through the process and you know, continue to visit you on site as you're going through the process to give you whatever help you need. Um, the project evaluation, that would be where um, one of our, con or I'm sorry, not necessarily concrete, it could be concrete or one of our floor flooring solution um, engineers can come out to your job site and look at the job site and help you determine what equipment would work best for what you're trying to accomplish. Perfect. Thank you, Ron. We've got uh, another good one here from Pepper. Uh, question is, why are my concrete floors hazy and tacky? I have not had this trouble in the 12 years I've been maintaining these floors. Would oil-based finish cause this? Um, yes, an oil-based finish could cause it. This is one of those that probably needs a little more um, digging into. But if there's any moisture, um, of course, moisture will react with different uh, chemicals differently. Um, I, so I, I think with that one there, I would have to probably talk to you offline, figure out what we're putting on the floor and what the environment is. Uh, maybe get one of our people out there to look at it to, to actually determine what's going on there. Yeah, so Pepper, yeah, please reach out to Ron. Shoot him an email. Uh, his email is there on the screen. Again, ronald.bridges at sunbeltrentals.com. Or you can reach out to flooring.info at sunbeltrentals.com and, and, and we'll take it offline and, uh, and get someone out there to take a look at that. All right, our next question, and uh, I can probably take this one, Ron, but uh, Andre asks, how much in advance do you need to make reservations for equipment? And so I'll answer that is, is as soon as I say the sooner the, the better. Um, although in some instances, uh, we do take same day reservations. And so we've got a couple different options. You can either come and pick it up from our locations. And we've got 70 specific flooring locations nationwide. We also have the ability to deliver, train, and then pick up on site as well. Those may need at least 24 hours in advance for deliveries. Uh, but I would say as soon as advanced as you can, reach out to us, flooring.info at sunbeltrentals.com. We can provide you a quote ahead of time and let you also know about the availability of the equipment that you're looking for. A good question there. Next question, Ron, coming your way. 
what is the slip resistance of polished concrete? <laughs> Always one that's going to stump me. Okay, so what I do know is polished concrete does have a lower slip coefficient than most other flooring. But I do not have an actual range for what that would be. Um, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that one. You stumped him, Keith. We will we'll reach out to you, Keith, and we'll uh, or you can reach out to again Ronald at Bridges at summitreynolds.com, and we will take that as well. All right. Uh, next question, Ron. Uh, how can you maintain? the shine on the polished concrete. How often do you need to polish it? And what cleaners can be used to extend the life of the shine? So three part question, we'll break down the first one. How can you maintain the shine on the polished concrete? Okay, to maintain the shine is, is pretty much just good maintenance. Um, the, the daily maintenance that I had gone through on the slide, um, where you're keeping it swept because your, your dirt and stuff will uh, damage that shine if it's like uh, salts and sands and things like that. So the first step is to keep it clean. Now, depending on the amount of traffic, um, you're going to want to burnish it every so often to, to clean it. The chemicals that you use, um, depending again, what's on the floor, you have a, um, a lot of times just a mop and bucket, just plain water to clean it. But you do, if you are going to use a cleaner, you do want to use cleaners specifically made for polished concrete. Um, reason being is that the, the pH of this chemical really makes a difference. Things like your bleach and your really harsh chemicals will actually etch concrete. So that'll definitely take the shine away. Um, so depending on what, what your polishing process was, like let's say for an example, you were to use a, uh, some sort of a polish guard at the end of your process. Um, usually if you just keep that floor clean every so often, run a burnisher over it, it'll keep that shine for some time. Um, if there's a lot of traffic every so often, you might want to put another coat of that on there. Did that answer that question, Alex? I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. Yep. Thanks, Ron. Well, uh, so here's our first fun question. Another opportunity to win a Sunbelt Rentals Bluetooth speaker. So coming up in October, in a few months, uh, the ISSA is putting on their, their trade show in which we are will be there well represented. A large contingent of our team will be there. So we'd love for you to stop by, say hello, check out our equipment. Uh, but the question is, and enter it into the chat or the Q&A box, is what number show is this for the ISSA? And we'll give away another Bluetooth speaker for who either gets it right on or closest to it. So I'll, I'll lean on the ISSA for helping get that answer. All right, here's another one coming, Ron. Our, this is from Jeremy, outdoor floors, an option to polish. So can you polish floors outdoors? Okay, you can polish concrete anywhere there is concrete. However, it is not always the proper solution for the environment. The, the outdoor weather, the, um, you know, the, the rains have all the, the other chemicals and stuff that are washing out of the air. A polished floor outside will not last very long. You would have to continually um, be trying to, to re-grind that one to bring the shine back. Perfect. All right, Ron, next one coming from Paul. Could you rescue the floor from the cornrow look with honing and polishing, or is it too late? Yes, you could. Um, now, the downside to it is that they've already taken all the cream off of that, off of that uh, concrete. So what you're going to have after you grind all that down is you're going to have a heavy aggregate look. Well, maybe not a real heavy, but you're going to have more aggregate showing in that floor than, um, 
you may want if you're just wanting a cream polished floor or just a plain concrete look. But they definitely could have smoothed those lines out and gone ahead and polished it. Um, now it's it's not a good idea to shot blast a floor before you polish it because again it makes it a lot of grinding to get all those little marks and stuff out. Um, and if you don't do enough grinding after shot blasting, when you look across the floor from a distance, it'll actually make the floor look like it's dusty because of all the little pits and stuff in it. Yep. And, and along the same lines of that, here's another question that comes from Keith. What is the maximum depth of grinding that can be done without interfering with the depth of steel reinforcement cover? How far down can we can we grind, Ron? Well, you're probably not going to want to grind that far. Um, the, if you're talking about the rebar and the um, the wire that they put in the concrete, um, that's usually a good two inches at least minimum below the surface. Um, so you, you're going to have to be into the sawing um arena before you would ever start to hit that a uh, i guess a grinder one pass with 30s you're probably only going to take about a 64th of an inch off so you'd have an mm -hmm. awful lot of grinding to get down there yep that's right that's right all right next one comes good question here from judy my employees have difficulty doing smooth concrete but have no problem with heavy aggregate concrete why would two questions why would this be is it supposed to be easier to do smooth okay so i'm assuming that we're talking about polished concrete and the the diamonds again determining on what the customer needs is is crucial if they're looking for a cream polish, the first thing I'm going to do is analyze the floor and see if it's capable of a cream polish. Now, floors that would not be capable of a cream polish are those that have a lot of dips and divots and scratches that you're going to have to grind out um, to get a smooth floor. Um, now, if it's newer concrete, then it could be the tooling that they're starting out with. Um, they're probably starting out with tooling that's a little more aggressive than what it needs to be. So if you're doing a cream polish, um, I would normally, cream polish to a light salt and pepper depending, but I would normally start out with like a 50 copper and not uh, be using any heavy metal diamonds at all. Perfect. Thank you, Ron. We, we continue to get in the questions uh, for which uh, which show this is going to be coming up in October. And uh, again, we'll 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 use the ISSA for them to get us the answer and get out the, again that Bluetooth custom speaker um, who gets closest or right on. Uh, Al puts in a question here. Could we request a demo at our office in Longwood, Florida? Who would we have to contact? Yes, yes. So now, <laughs> if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll take this one, Ron. Flooring.info at sunbeltrentals.com. Uh, we have a flooring location there in Orlando. So very close to you there in Longwood. Uh, Alicia Navarro would be the contact. We can put you in connection with her. So again, reach out to us or we can reach out to you, Al, with your contact information. And we'll be happy to set that up. Great question. And I I want to I want to put in that we've also got a concrete specialist that covers that market, Joe Liska. So he'd be glad to bring a grinder out there and give you a demo. There you go, Al. Yep, Joe and Alicia, we will uh, we will get you all connected. Uh, question here from Paul: Any treatment for concrete prior to being covered with selected flooring? And and he puts in parentheses VCT carpet epoxy. LVT. So any treatment for concrete prior to being covered with selected flooring. Okay, now that that's a real loaded question. Um, now, 
assuming that there's no moisture issues or anything along that line, then, you know, normally all you're going to do is if it's a slick trowel finish is you just want to rough up that surface just a little bit so that you get a, a, a better um, adherence of whatever it is that you're putting down on there. So that could, uh, that could be something like a, a simple light uh, grind just to, just to kind of rough that surface up just a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, going back to floor scrapers for this question, Ron, how long does the battery typically last before recharging? And I guess it's not asked here, but then what would be the typical charging period for an electric floor scraper? Okay. The, depending on how hard you're running the unit, um, you can get somewhere around four to six hours on a charge. Um, there, there's so many factors that can affect that, though. And then um, I do believe that it's a six-hour recharge period. I would actually have to look that up myself. Um, I do want to go back to the uh, Florida demo. Mm -hmm. um, that question real quick yep. also. Um, we have one of these workshops coming up in um, Orlando in um, October. October, okay. There we go. Al, we'll uh, again, we'll we'll get you that that sheet, and um, and and we'd love to host you there, feed you lunch, network, and and let you get to know again Joe and Alicia down there in Orlando coming up in October. Uh, here's another question we answered earlier: Can we polish exterior concrete? Ron, you touched on that. Uh, here's one from Paul. Does my local Sunbelt have a directory of proven subs for concrete finishing? Uh, yes, we work with a number of different contractors. So if this is something that you're looking for, Paul, again, reach out to us at flooring.info at sunbeltrentals.com, and we'll have one of our local sales reps reach out and, uh, and help, help you make any introductions as needed. Uh, here's one from Jerome. How do you get started in the carpet removal services? How do you get started? I <laughs> well, um, the easiest way is um, did one of the jobs and win it, and um, we've got the equipment to help you. I'm not really sure what we're trying to to ask there. Yeah, I would um, add on that too, Ron, is, is look, the, the beauty of rental and part of our value equation, Jerome, is, is that you don't have to own this equipment to go out and bid the job. So you can use us to obtain quotes. You can use us to use our expertise to go out and help you spec the job and make recommendations. And again, that's all through the 844 number or flooring.info at sumboutrentals.com. And we'd be happy to help support you in whatever market that you are serving. Here's another fun question, again, to give away our, our other Bluetooth speaker. Uh, hopefully this is an easy one that we can give away. What do the letters in ISSA stand for? So put that in the chat or in the Q&A. What do the letters in ISSA stand for? All right, as we wait for those questions to come in or those answers, here's one from Miguel. I can I can take this one as well, Ron. What's the average cost of rentals, equipment slash supplies per 1,000 square feet? So Miguel, I would tell you, reach out to us, flooring.info at sumboutrentals.com. We'd be happy to provide you a quote. Uh, Ron, unless there's a, a formula, which I'm not familiar with for average cost per 1,000 square feet, it, it probably varies on whether it's a shop blaster, grinding, floor floor removal, lots of different variables that would go into that. So yeah. if you reach out to us, we'd be happy to, again, provide a quote and get some more information on what exactly that you're looking for. Yeah, unfortunately, every 1,000 square feet is going to be different because there's going to be a different process probably on each one. Exactly, exactly. All right, and we are, we're coming up here on time. We've got a few more questions 
um, here in the chat. And for those that we we don't get to, again, we're going to lean on the ISSA for the time constraints that we have here for the hour webinar. Uh, we will respond and follow up um, with each of those questions that have come in. So real quick, Ron, here's, here's another one. Our company would be new to this process. Aside from the eight-hour training you offer, is there a service available for continuous on-site service until we get the hang of it? If you're renting the equipment, we will always give you the support that you need. Um, I know I've done uh, I've done jobs myself where I've gone up there, uh, spent the weekend with them doing the polishing because it was like their first job. But yes, um, if you need help on your second and third job and so on, we'll have someone out there with you. Now. We don't really stay with you through the whole job. We make sure you know what you're doing, and then we come and help if there's anything that goes wrong. That's exactly right. Yep. We do have a winner of one of the Bluetooth speakers for the ISSA with the letter stand for. So Scott Warrington, he is right, the International Sanitary Supply Association. So congratulations, Scott. You were the first one to put that in. We will uh, follow up with the other winner, uh, uh, for the number show as well. We do also have some additional answers from Pepper, Derek, and Brandon. So look, appreciate you all putting that in there. We'll make sure to get a, a additional speakers for you all as well. So again, we appreciate the time you all being on here today. Again, Martha, sorry that we went over just a little bit um, on the time slot, but the questions were really good. We do have a few that we'll answer offline and reach out to you. So um, hopefully everyone's been able to take down something from this conversation. Uh, and again, we're happy to continue the conversation. If you need private consultation, please say, reach out to Ron or again, flooring.info at sumboutrentals.com. We're here for any private consultation. Again, part of the value equation of rental. So again, thank you very much to the ISSA and thank you to all the attendees who joined us today. We certainly appreciate your time and attention. Have a good day.